I know you can't talk specifically about Twitter, but you can talk about this concept of momentum. What does this phrase momentum mean to Moy Kaufman and now this lack of momentum? Well, I think it's um, we have markets where people are investing based on hopes and dreams often as opposed to the reality of near term performance. Um, and I think we're, we are in and have been in a momentum market that has pushed stocks to be priced to perfection in some mm -hmm. of these uh, growth sectors. And I actually don't think it's tech specific. I think it's specific to uh, you know any growth sector where you get both institutional and retail right. exuberance. And I think what we're seeing now is a bit of a come to Jesus where you know the, per the reality of earnings and the reality of being priced to perfection right. is that you have to nail everything. For our listeners and viewers worldwide, if they want, if they own these dogs and they want to blame somebody, who do they blame for that exuberance themselves? Well, you know, the reality is I don't think they're dogs. You know, I, I think the, the important thing to recognize here is that um, most of the innovation, a good chunk of the innovation that we're seeing in our economy is coming from the tech sector. And um, I think there's going to be continued strong performance amongst many of these companies for the foreseeable future. In the near term, if you're going to if you're going to weather the storm, if you're going to take position on these businesses, I think you have to expect the beta, you have to expect the ups and downs, and the only person at the end of the day you ever have to blame for making an investment is yourself. Right. We don't have That's to define true. beta on Thursdays, do we? No, uh, it's we a Wednesday is a beta day. Wednesday is yeah. Wednesday yeah. definitely Wednesday's beta. beta. Yeah. Okay, continue. No, no, we do. If we get to gamma, if we get to gamma, we'll yeah, cover that we'll, too. Yeah. Al alpha really. Whoa, you know. Greek Whoa. letters with Mo. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you're you going for alpha or beta in this market. I, mean, <laughs> I thought this was a financial news network. It is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But not a, not a Greek one. Okay, Scarlet fine. Scarlett, save us. <laughs> you mentioned how momentum is hopes and dreams versus near-term reality. Amazon, Netflix, these are real businesses with near-term reality, yet they got caught up in the momentum trade as well. Well, you know, like Amazon, for instance, is a company that has really pushed off profitability at the expense of investment and growth. And, you know, the, the um, uh, a friend of mine reminded uh, Reminded my friend Stu reminded me of uh, of a quote yesterday. You know, the market in the in uh, famous value investor the market in the short term is like a voting machine, and in the long term is like a scale, right? So I think we're seeing the voting machine effect right now, where momentum sentiment swings, uh, and people get very nervous when they don't see the earnings or the sustainable profitability of some of these businesses, and then they return to the exuberance of it will come. And the reality is, Amazon has taken a position for the future and not for delivering on present earnings. So what happens with the venture capitalists uh, in Silicon Valley and in New York? Do they look at this loss of momentum, this sentiment change, and do they change their way of looking at the market as well? You know, we typically uh, don't change the way we look at the market in the sense that we're still interested in the same areas, we're still interested in the same sectors, we're interested in the same disruptive trends, and we tend to invest through thick and thin, through the tough times and, and the good times. Um, and that's how, you know, you don't know, you cannot predict if I could predict when the market was going to go up and down, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Um, but you know what we know is that when we're investing in sectors where um, we believe in the long term value is going to accrue to those sectors, we invest through the good times and the bad times. And the, you know the one benefit of the correction in the public markets is that you know valuations in the private markets tend to follow public markets, so okay. we get more rational private market valuations. That helps us on new investments, hurts us a bit potentially on existing investments, but you know, that's why we always encourage our companies to obviously try and get great valuations in the market, but not to push themselves too far where they get caught uh, and they cannot continue to raise at the step ups that they're looking for in the market. So I, I think it's always important to keep a rational head about these things and to have a long term point of view while being cognizant of what's going right, on. So you talk about time. rational. Is there any justification for uh, all the, the big old tech names that, 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 that we know, Cisco, Oracle, Microsoft, Intel, is there any compelling reason to own those names? I think to the extent you believe that they're going to deliver on their cash flow promises and they're going to deliver on those cash flow promises better than the market expects them to and that you know the impending competition from the new entrants will happen slower than expected I think in the short term those so, names can be owned. In other words it, it's like a bond with with maybe a, maybe a little bit of a call option embedded but not much of one. That's, uh, that's the saying. way I look at it but you know th the reality is it, it depends what kind of investor you are what kind of term you're looking at for investment and the kind of yields you're expecting to generate. So there's a, there's a stock for everybody, right? 